So you want to be a storm chaser? Great. I bet the first thing you'll do is drive straight into the tornado. Don't do that. I bet they're gonna do it. Every chase day and outbreak starts at what's called storm initiation. That's when storms initiate. Your role as a storm chaser is to document the storm, either by taking pictures with your camera, reporting storm elements with your phone, or intercepting tornadoes with your probe. If you do this properly, you'll gain currency at the end of the chase to purchase items in the shop. To get better pictures, simply get close enough to get a good view and fill up your camera roll with valuable shots. If Jeff here would turn around, he would take better pictures. Wow, this is gonna be so many points. To get better reports, try to be the first to report each storm element. But reporting an element that was already reported is still valuable. To get the best out of your probe intercepts, you'll have to place your probe as close as possible to where the center of the tornado will hit. Stronger tornadoes are less common, but are even more valuable. Oh yeah, and remember that you can't place your probe on roads. That would not be very considerate for the other chasers, would it? Remember that storm chasing is a dangerous and challenging endeavor, so not every run is going to go as planned. No one can be called a chaser without a good bust every now and then. Trust me, I've had a lot. The best way to be a better chaser is to be better at predicting storm behaviors. All the storms you will see in Outbreak are built using scientific weather data, so they are behaving exactly like they would in real life. You can observe and predict the formation of storm clouds by how they behave in the sky, or use realistic and accurate tools such as reflectivity and velocity maps as you would during a real chase that you can access in the game using, well, a button on your keyboard or on your controller, I guess. Outbreak also has advanced weather products, and we encourage you to explore them at your own speed using the info tooltip. But for now, let's stick with the basic products. The reflectivity map shows the intensity of precipitations, such as rain and hail in an area. The typical thing to look for on the reflectivity map is this nice little hook shape. We're not going to cover atmospheric science in a minute, but wink wink, that hook-shaped group of colorful pixels is probably where it's happening. The second very useful weather product is the velocity radar. On this map, you can see where the physical radar is located in the world, and whether the wind is moving towards, in green, or away, in red, from the radar. Basically, you want to find a tight area of winds converging to a precise point, an indicator of rotation. If that's all gibberish for you, you can refer to the polygons on the map. They represent areas that are under a severe thunderstorm warning, in yellow, or tornado warning, in red. A tornado warning means there is at least potential for a tornado to happen in that area at any time, but it doesn't mean it will always touch the ground. If you're just starting, a good way to learn is to follow more experienced players around and observe which storms they are going for and how they position themselves. Before getting all that hard-earned money home, you'll get some deductions at the end of your chase. All the damage done to your car and windows from collision or hail will get repaired. All the money spent on fuel, including topping up your gas tank, and emergency towing will be deducted from your final earnings at the end. If you end up being terribly unlucky and your deductions end up being more than your earnings, we won't steal from your bank account and you'll just end your chase day earning nothing. That's the basics of Outbreak. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask on the Steam forum or our Discord server. Stay safe out there.